Hey everybody, I'm DK with Adventures in Dirt. I want to welcome you to uh, our episode of Digger Spot. Uh, let me give you one second, I'm going to adjust something here. We can make that one adjustment and then I'll get with you. Awesome, yeah. Hey, everyone, th welcome. Thanks for coming to this next edition of Digger Spotlight. Hey, if you're new here, if you've never seen a Digger Spotlight, let me just tell you, Digger Spotlight is a show I put on twice a month. We'll all bring on notable diggers from our metal detecting community, and I'll bring them in for a little live streaming chat, little one-on-one -on -one sit down. We'll get involved with the chat uh the chat room, we'll kind of talk back and forth, ask, ask some questions. So feel free to throw your questions in that chat. And if you notice the text running around the bottom of the screen, it would really help me out if you start typing the at symbol in Adventures in Dirt. My name will come up. Click on that. What that does is to me, from my end of things, it highlights my name and it says, this person has a question. And that way I'm able to acknowledge you and get your questions in to our guests. And it should be great. If you're unfamiliar with Digger Spotlight, we've done a number of them. So we've had some awesome guests. Uh, as soon as this live stream is done, I'm going to put a card right up there. I'll put the card right up there, and you'll be able to go check out the playlist from some of the other guests we had. And if you want to go back and watch them, that would be great. Hey, another show I have here at Adventures in Dirt called The Weekly Dirt. It's a weekly wrap-up of kind of what's been going on in our metal detecting community. I'll pick four or five channels. I'll feature them. I'll spotlight them. I'll show you what kind of finds they found that week. And then I'll bring you up to speed on any giveaways I'm familiar with or uh, any – let me see any like, uh, you know, organized hunts that I'm aware of or any kind of announcements. So if you got something I need to be aware of to put in my weekly dirt series every Sunday at 3 p.m. Mountain, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and fill me in and let me know. And you can always, as it says in the card right there, leave me an email at DK at Adventures in Dirt. So enough of the public service announcements. Let's get to tonight's episode. You know, uh, tonight's guest has been somebody that I've been watching. I've been watching the channel. Uh, ever since I've been in metal detecting and just been a fan. I'm, I'm really a fan of the channel and of those Hoover boys. I'm telling you, big fan. They're always putting out some great channel, uh, great, great videos, and I really enjoy watching them. I love seeing the camaraderie between them. And uh, tonight's guest, Kurt Franz from the Hoover boys, absolutely stellar individual, and I'm really excited to have him on here. Let me go over and see if he's on, uh, see if I can bring him in. Hey, there he is, Kurt. Hey, how you doing there, Kurt? What's up, DK? How you doing? I thought we had a frozen screen there for a minute. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't stick oh, like that. hey, you got all oh, the Hoover boys yeah. there. No crashing the party, everyone. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Good. Yeah, great. So I didn't, uh, let me pop up my chat window right here. Yeah. Hey, Kurt, thanks for doing this with me today. Thanks for coming on, being my guest here on Digger Spotlight. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Absolutely. These things are always fun. Yeah. Who do you see? Are you got your chat window up? Who do you see in chat uh, right now? Ah, uh, we got Warren. We got uh, Treasure Hunting SWPA. We got Detecting Dakota. Detecting Dakota. We got Mike Milan 24. Linda Wall, we got all kinds of people detecting in dirt, coin, Ozzy, Bugmaster. I saw Bobby in here. I saw Trooper Brian here, Mark Saxon. Uh, I know, I know the my my Whippet boys are in here too. We we're, were home with a buddy Mark today. Yeah, you went outdoor knocking. He did some digging today. Yeah, we just got home. We were high town at home. It was a couple hour drive. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining in. There's uh Bob. Bobby Buttons is in the house. Bobby Buttons. Yeah, buddy. They were saying you're a little hot, so I'm trying to adjust your adjust your volume a little bit. Uh -huh. You're hot. Kurt's hot. Uh, it was yeah. old. <laughs> it, it was, boy, I'll tell you, I, I had to go up to Aspen. You know, I live in Colorado, and I had to go up to Aspen today, which is about a five-hour drive for me, and it was about um, 13 degrees up there. It wasn't snowing, though, so I was lucky about that. I was really thankful about that. Hey, when I was looking back at the chat, Pull Tab King, with number two, was in the, in the house. Jeremy Daly was number one. Uh, looks like he was number one uh, chat in there. Uh, let me see. Uh, Potter Country Diggers in the house. Drew, 26711. How you doing? Thanks for joining us. Iffy Signals in the house. Awesome. Brian. <laughs> yeah. Mike over there. Uh, Trooper Bry is in the house. You said that crazy dirt boy is in the house. I'm just reading through some of these. Uh, my moderator, 5280 Adventures, Tony, how you doing? Thanks for joining me tonight. Hey, and if I'm not getting to your questions, here, here's what I need you all to do. If I'm not getting to your questions fast enough or if you think I've missed your question, 
just tap one of my uh, moderators with the blue names there. 5280 Adventures, M.A. Lyman, Mike Lyman, uh, M.A. Lyman 24 should be showing up. And uh, you're able to go ahead and tap them and say, hey, make sure Ken answers this question and we'll get to it. Hey, there he is, M.A. Lyman. Awesome. I love Big Knockers. It's a nice name. <laughs> oh, where's that at? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Great, great name. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks all for coming. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, so, Kurt, hey, I just want to – yeah. Who's it? Who's it? Ken Hurst. Yeah. All right. Coils That's to the true. soil. <laughs> hey, there's a good question to start off with. All Metal Mike wants to know, Kurt, how do you balance detecting work and family? Actually, you I know what, Kurt? Can, before you get to that, I have the yeah. I have the question actually that every is on everyone's mind, and I really wanted to start to show off with this question. Can uh, Can you give me your wife's maiden name and your social security number, please, sir? Thank you. Uh, maiden name is. Bertha, right. and uh, it's five 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 five. Excellent. With an I or an E. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Uh, the... hey. <laughs> Both. Both. All right. So, how do you balance detecting work and family? That's always a good question. I have an absolutely amazing wife. Yeah. There's there's no other way around it. Um, we have three little kids, and uh, she is amazing yeah she's always uh very she's very supportive of what i do number one and um she uh is constantly running the kids around different places and that's one reason why i haven't been on facebook very much in the past six months because i'm trying to have more family time than being sucked into you know, my ipad and playing on facebook yeah and i apologize for that Especially like keeping up with private messages and stuff. I haven't been on there at all. It's tough, right? I mean, it just, I'm sure it gets Very overwhelming. Tough. I mean, you know, you guys are, you guys are a really popular channel. I know a lot of people love the Hoover boys. You guys put out a great product. You really do. I mean, I think we were talking about that the other day. Uh, you know, as a fan, we were talking about that. I mean, I really get the sense of the camaraderie. I mean, I get a sense of how tight you guys are from watching your videos. And Ooh. I'm sure I don't even have a clue. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure. Uh, you know, the stuff that happens off screen is probably, you know, people that catch an episode here or there, it's their first time watching it. They'll be like, you know, people don't understand it. Like we're, I consider us family. Like we've grown so tight over the years that we've been detecting together and, uh, like, yeah, we, we bust each other's balls and we bust each other's balls hard, but nobody's butt hurt at the end of the day. You're right. Except for Bill. <laughs> It's like, I, I, I'm kind of butthurt. <laughs> no? Yeah, that's the way. I mean, that's the way it's got to be. I know that uh, I prefer digging with partner, too. I got a digging partner at 5280 Ventures, my digging partner. We go out a lot. We spend a lot of time out digging together, and it's great. You're able to give each other the business, and it seems like he's always picking the better side of the uh, the yard or whatever, and, uh, uh, you know, just kind of busting chops a bit. But, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, really rooting for each other. I know that when I uh, – you know, when he finds something great, I'm just right there, you know, applauding him right down the road. And, and, and I see it on your guys' videos, too. I mean, I was watching your latest video uh, recently, and, you know, who was it? Steven just was tearing it up. I mean, you know, and you guys were all right there behind him, just, you know, just as excited as if you guys had pulled it. And uh, it was pretty cool to watch. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're all good detectors, and we're on – really early properties we're lucky to get on some amazing permissions right and who has the lucky swing that day is up to the gods you know <laughs> up to god and steve had it yeah he couldn't miss right i mean i don't i don't want to give away too much information from tonight's or today's episode because i know there's a lot of people that haven't seen it yet but yeah. it's it's insane yeah, highly recommended. Great episode. Absolutely. Congratulations, Steve. I know you're out there watching. Yeah, Again, yeah. I'm still nauseous when I think about what you did. <laughs> see anybody new join us here? I saw you guys chuckling at the screen. Did you guys see an entertaining question? It was come up? Somebody said something about Leo, and has he gone through his first set of batteries <laughs> in this AT Max? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Leo yeah. wishes he could be out more. He's juggling work and school and everything else in between family. Yeah. So uh, you guys are in New Hampshire. Yeah. We've been to New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, what um, What's your main 
so you when you well let, let's start here for why metal detecting let's start there let's start at the beginning like why of all the hobbies in the world kurt why metal detecting? i mean I, i've had a lot of hobbies over the over the years so but I. metal detecting sort of uh i don't know it's most addictive <laughs> um i've always had my eyes on the ground i've always been sort of a money grubber like as a little kid you know i always loved coins like finding coins on the ground and i used to jump under the counter at 7-eleven or convenience stores when i was a kid and you know look for people's change that fell and hit the ground I was, i've always had my eyes on the ground looking for things and uh when i was i don't know maybe 12 years old or so like my best friend and his father got metal detectors and i would go out and actually just watch them and uh that summer I scraped enough money, you know, mowing lawns and stuff like that. And uh, bought my first metal detector and went out and joined them. And we did that for a handful of years as kids and had a good time. Didn't find anything too crazy. You know, we were limited to our neighborhood, knocking like 1920s houses and stuff like that. We found like a spill of large sense back in the woods. And uh, we had a good time, but life slipped away and you grow up and you get jobs and chase girls and yeah. you know i'd stop metal detecting until i was back into my I guess 30 or so yeah yeah and then and the hoover boys what made you start wanting to put this stuff on video and and then jump into i don't this know crazy world <laughs> yeah you know. um i i never like i always watched videos like i always enjoyed watching videos and uh it was just one Christmas. Well, I guess it was, it was just after, it was just four years ago. I think it was four years ago. I got a new cell phone and I'm like, I know it's capable of doing good videos. And uh, I was out by myself and I got one of those great signals. I'm like, I'm going to try one of those live dig things. So I turned on the camera and that was episode one of the Hoover boys. I had no idea what I was doing and no idea what I was getting myself into, but I enjoyed making the video. I've edited a video in the past and, uh, it just sort of uh, went on from that. I, I thought it would be a cool way to document what we were doing, what we were finding. What's your overall impression of this whole YouTube experience? I mean, you started that. You didn't know what you were getting into. I mean, I understand that completely. And it's been right. a roller coaster. I never expected anybody to watch our videos. I was, I was doing it for us. And, like, everybody's like, how do you, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? I'm like, don't do it for anybody but yourself. You know, like I said, I was doing it to document what we were doing, you know, and – Later in life, when we're too old to do this, we can sit back and actually Watch relive it. it all again. And like, it's it's the moments that are called on video that, like, when somebody live digs something or just just somebody's raw emotion or like when I live dug the, a chain scent, like, I can't like just capturing those moments, you know, in time and going back and being able to relive them is is really special. I mean, I I I went black when i saw the chain i just said dude and chain sent like 50 <laughs> times I, I, I don't even remember what i did hey speaking of that chain then i know exactly what you did because i picked, grabbed a little clip of it so why, <laughs> why don't we why don't we watch a little clip of that chain sent video uh, i'll go ahead and roll it here and why don't you tell me what was going through your head i i, I just got done digging a, a copper it was a wasted copper and I got another coin signal. I think I called like two reals or something yeah. and I uh, gave Bobby the camera. And it was just a windy, nasty day. It was actually at one of my friend's houses and uh, Boy, I took it up. I was like, you know, cause, cause I was, it was such a pure signal. I was calling, you know, a silver and I was like, ah, oh, it's just another copper, just another copper. Yeah. Then I wiped the edge. And I was like, this seems really thick. Yeah, it, looks really it was thick. just so unbelievably thick. And right then I knew I had something different. Yeah. And when I was toothpicking it and I saw the chain, I just I just blacked out and just started talking. <laughs> yeah, hey, for those that aren't uh, familiar, why don't you talk a little bit about the chain scent? Like what do you uh, what do you know about the chain scent? It's pretty pretty rare. Yeah, it's uh it's thirty six thousand one hundred and three of them ever minted. It was I think that's the number. Um put me on the spot. <laughs> Uh, it was the first coin the United States, first large scent the United States minted for circulation, and uh, it was it, it wasn't very popular because it said uh, 
when it hit the streets of Philadelphia, they said that the hairstyle of Lady Liberty was too wild and oh. and the on the black the back that was supposed to have represented the, the newly formed Union in the fifteen United States at the time, they said it like you know, looked like it represented slavery and then they switched the, soon after switched the uh large scent to the, the Liberty with cap design and the, the, the cap represents uh you know what slaves are given when they become free and they change the chain to the reef back design. Yeah. It's a crazy coin. There's only a couple thousand of them known to exist and to actually find one. And like, I never thought I'd be able to see one in real life. Nonetheless, dig one out of the ground and catch it on live. It was, it was special. And what kind of property was that, uh, that you were at? Uh, it was, I want to say his house was like mid to early 1800s yeah but he's like he lives on this farm that wraps around an old graveyard wow. and the, the gravestones went back earlier than that and there's some other early properties like around there um and it was just on the side of his his driveway wow so do you uh when you go about getting permissions for for where you guys go and hunt uh w between all of you guys there do you uh is there one person that does the majority of the research and another person's better at permissions? Uh, how's all that work? I do most of the knocking. I'm trying to get the other guys to, to, uh, to, to grow a pair and go up and <laughs> knock them. No, um, since, since Bobby is like full-time job man again, like he used to go out with me and do a lot of door knocking and get permissions on his his own, but we lost Bobby during the week because of yeah. work, which is more important than hanging out with your friends and digging. You gotta yeah. take care of family first. But uh, now we're, we're we've been very lucky. We we scored a permission today that dates back to the 1630s. Man, <laughs> which is it's insane. Like it is insane, especially with me sitting here in Colorado. You know, 1850 is about as far back as we go. So when There's I hear nothing that, wrong with 1850s, probably. I'll dig that all day. Yeah, no, yeah, nothing wrong with that, of course. But when I hear that, hear that, hear that 1600 word, I'm like, holy cow, <laughs> that's, amazing. that's amazing. There's not too many of them around. Yeah. So how 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 are you received when you go to knock on these doors? I mean, I, you know. Door knocking's, you know, that's where it's where it's at for if you're going to do, you know, old residential neighborhood or where you're going to do farm knocking. I'm sure there's a difference in, in approach between farm and let's say a house in an old neighborhood. Yeah, um, we don't dig too many yards anymore. Today was actually a yard. Where, you know, I was more or less knocking the door to be like, hey, do you know who owns these fields around your place? And, you know, the, the guy came out and he was very nice. And, you know, was, you might have to do some LA on your property. He said, People have been here before. They've done it. You know, this was found. That was found. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, okay. Thank <laughs> you very much. Sir. Okay. Well, how, how do you take it from that point though to, Hey, I'm going to pull four or five guys out here. It's not just every, gonna be me, but every property is different. Yeah. Every property is different T today. It was just three of us. Like, I hate door knocking with more than two or three people. It's just too yeah. much. I mean, we've done, we've door knocked before with nine people and like, you know convoying vehicles it's 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 too much like when like my initial like you know door knocking scenario is two to three people and we'll try to get in with them and show them what we found and hopefully get in their good graces and let they let us come back right <clears throat> and are you just using old maps and such like that do you do your research and the overlays do and a lot of like map that? overlays um one site that's great is historic com. you can bring up maps from today you can bring up maps from the 50s and you can literally like swipe back and forth and overlay what you know where roads used to be where properties used to be um and you can go back even farther into like the top of maps that just show roads and like dots where houses used to be and you can bring up a patch of woods and swipe it back and forth and like oh there used to be a road through here and there was properties here here and here but we we're lucky enough where we live, like we'll target a town. Like we haven't been to this town. Let's drive to that town, drive through the town, get our bearings, look for the farms just on the outskirts of town and just cold door knock. Yeah, so We've also been very lucky with people inviting us to their permissions. I do not want to, you know, 
it's not all us getting permissions. We we have invites. We have some amazing friends that invite us to their places. And I can't thank them enough. Yeah, that's awesome. It is a pretty good community. Um, BP Any Kansas uh, wants to know, Kurt, what's the farthest you guys have traveled to metal detecting? What's the furthest you've traveled? Um, I mean, I've uh, we've been probably as far west as Ohio. We've been as far south as Florida. Far north is New Hampshire. Well, you guys, yeah, yeah, the New Hampshire. Brad and I are thinking about taking that trip across the pond this year <laughs> to England. Yeah, to go to Detective All or uh, Metal Detecting Vacations, that place over there. That's some cool stuff. Yeah. I tell you what, and I'm thinking about finally pulling that trigger. Yeah, <clears throat> I was watching a. Uh, watching a, i watch a lot of videos i for my weekly dirt series I, I i have to watch a lot of videos and uh i was watching this uh couple uh huntress kimmy and claude hopper scott i don't know if you've ever seen their channel but they dig over in england and they find the goods i'm telling you a lot of roman fields and they showed up at a field where when they pulled their cars up it was the place where people were sorting through their trash you could tell because some of them left some of their iron scraps around and stuff and they had left a bunch of garbage there and one of them was a Roman coin. The guy just didn't recognize it as a Roman coin and left it sitting there. And I'm sitting there going, ah, oh, that would just, be, you know, you're finding so Today, many Roman like, coins that you're just leaving them laying around, you know. <laughs> it's, we've got so much rain in the past year. Like everywhere you go is just a swamp. And like today, like I'm pulling something out of the ground. I'm like, I have my signal, but it's this little mushy ball of yuck. And you're trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, we have to have it's like, well, it's not a coin, it's not a button. I don't know what it is. I'll put it in my pouch and hopefully it dries out. We'll figure out what it is. Um, Mike Lima was asking me earlier, he sent me a question earlier. He wants to know what uh, your favorite detector is that you're using or what you're currently using uh, as a as your main go-to detector. I've, ever since the Garrett AT Max came out, I've used the Garrett AT Max. Um, I have brought out my Deus a few times, you know, just to check sites and didn't have much luck uh yeah it's, it's mostly been the garrett at max it just clicks with me like everybody has you know a machine or you know their favorite sort of flavor and that machine just works for me yeah <clears throat> like I, I detect with people that have the equinox and we share signals and there's nothing that machine hears that i haven't been able to hear so yeah. Take that as what you want. Yeah. Actually, today I was using yeah. the little five by eight coil from the AT Max, and our buddy uh, Mark was using Equinox, and I got a beautiful signal. We live dog in the, the backyard of this place, and like with the little tiny coil, like I should have got it on video. We should have got it on video. I was hitting, I was hitting the signal like eight inches off the ground with the five by eight coil. He swung over with the with the Equinox. He said it sounded good, but he was only getting it like two inches off the ground. And it was a silver quarter on edge, completely on edge. Wow. And I've heard, you know, that that machine has problems with silver on edge. And, you know, that isn't the first time that's happened to us because he was digging a signal out of the water um, on one of our water sites. And he lost the signal. He said it was a good signal, then he lost it. It was a, it was a seated Liberty dime. He actually ended up turning it on edge and he couldn't hear it anymore. I came over with the Max. It didn't sound great, but I ended up digging it out. Well, um, I've heard those smaller coils well, are really amazing. sniping, just really laser, in, you know. I mean, Steve in today's video is using the Equinox and he slayed it, but he was the lucky person that swung over this stuff. If you had a full-size coil on that machine. People get so wrapped up and like, what do you use? This machine's better than that machine. Just <laughs> pick a machine, learn it, find good locations. You're going to you're gonna have a good time, yeah. and, you know, be successful. Hey, that brings me, that reminds me of something. And I'm going to start a war here in chat. But, hey, when I'm asking Kurt a question, why don't you guys in chat go ahead and answer it yourself? It'll get some get some conversations going in chat. So why don't you all put down what kind of uh, machines you guys are swinging out there in the chat, and we'll get a little detector war going. <laughs> Keep it clean, guys. Keep it clean. But have some fun with that. I'm sure that'll Bob, be interesting. <laughs> Bob said I am the max. <laughs> So Kurt, let me ask you: If you think, do you think if you had your full stock, um, your full size coil, on that Max, it wouldn't have picked up that quarter on edge? Uh, no, do you think? No do you problem. think? It, no. Okay. Different coils or anything. 
So you don't think it was, you don't think it was the fact you were using a smaller coil and it was zeroing in and hitting that? No. I had to stock on mine. Mine picked it up. Did it? Did, did it? Yeah, yeah, he was swinging the, the max of the stock. That's pretty today. good, man. On edge. I and mean, the place was from the 1630s. Good. I figured it was gonna be littered with iron, and there were some really heavy iron patches. Yeah. I did. I did well today. Um, somebody was sitting here at. Um, <laughs> Where's it at? There it is. Uh, Mr. Terry Solomon. Uh, hey, thanks for your support, buddy. I appreciate that. What's the best prank you've ever pulled on your on your on your on your buddies there? Kurt, you in particular. What's the best prank you've pulled on your buddies there? Great question, Terry. <laughs> I've uh, I got Leo back when we were doing a lot of park hunting. I was like oh. joking, her, joking around. I was like, dude, my pinpoint is not working. Come, like just to get him to come over, and I I had a fake hammered gold coin like in my oh. sidewall just jammed in there <laughs> you know I pinpointed it down so I, with his pinpointers to get him over there and it popped it out and i i like i immediately started like crying it was like whatever emotions like rolled over me that i actually found the gold coin like what it would feel like and like he ate it off it was hilarious <laughs> that was that, i think that was before we started even doing videos yeah shit I remember I I was digging a farm. I uh, mean, uh, I was by myself actually. It was a new farm permission I got. This old 1890s farm, and I'm hit the hot spot. I think I figure it's a hot spot first underneath these trees by this outside fireplace, and I'm digging about four inches down, and it was a midtone, and this gold coin popped to the surface about the size of a dime, a little a little a little larger. And I I just I didn't know what I was looking at. It had an eagle on it, had Spanish writing on it. It was gold. And I, you know, I'm not a big coin guy. I just don't know my coins. So I was looking at it going, holy crap, what did I just find? You know what I mean? Like, I, I think I just found my first gold coins. I'm calling my buddy Tony. I'm like, sending him a text picture. I'm like, what is it? What the hell did I just find? You know, you know what it turned out to be? It turned out, to, and I never knew about it. So it was a learning experience. This is what I like about the hobby is you learn so much, you know, as you discover. It was a gold-plated, uh, Mexican matrimonial token called an eras. And no, I, and I guess in some traditions they give the the broom gives the bride thirteen of these gold plated coins, as sort of a promise in this jar, you know. So I found that out through the internet through Google, and about a week later, my buddy comes up with me back to the property, and he found the same exact one about seven feet over. And so now we've got to wonder. We nicknamed the the ranch, uh, the farm there, the Ranch of Broken Dreams, because we're like, why, why are these matrimonial tokens scattered all that's, over? You know, the trooper crowd? price says free for one disappointment. <laughs> uh, Good for one awesome. disappointment. <laughs> hey, I want to say hi to Stephen Stark. I saw that, and uh, Bob, Bob Horse is in there. Uh, Bob, how you doing? Shock is closet. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on the crazy dirt boys. I said hi to your life and times of Barney Taylor. You guys, thanks for coming in. Nine two finder. Great video from you this last week. Thanks for uh, stopping by and saying hi. Florida Rob. Digging. Who's in there? Florida Rob. Florida Rob. How you doing there, Rob? Good to see you. He came up to one of our one of our uh, local metal detecting meetings, and it just so happened that all these fellers were working the next day, and we got out for a little bit. I got hey, permission. Didn't pan out the way I wanted it to, but yeah. we did a little thing together. That's awesome. That's awesome. He, he, he's a great guy. Plugmaster Ford. Plugmaster Ford. Saw he's in here. Good to see you there, Jeff. The Lou D711. I'm just calling some people out uh, as people stopped in. And hey, if you're just joining us, this is Digger Spotlight. I'm DK with Adventures in Dirt, and I'm here with uh, Kurt with the hoover boys so if you got questions make sure you just uh follow the text running around the bottom of the screen oh sorry for getting bill getting the bill i'm sorry we gotta get you on the billing there bill and put your name on the put your name on the, th the thumbnail um somebody was asking um <laughs> often does brad flowing hair coins off camera so how often oh. does bad by flying flowing hair fine flowing actually hair he camera? does Oh. He, he sent he sent somebody a package. He was telling me about it. You know, somebody was communicating on online. He ended up sending him, you know, some of his finds and stuff. And I think he put them in like a Ziploc baggie full of dirt. And he said he took some mercury dives and scraped them oh. with his shovel before oh. he put them in there and packaged them and sent them to him. <laughs> oh my! Oh he my told gosh, me about man. that. I I lost it shoot it, it's hard for me to keep my truck on the road sometimes just doing road trips with these guys <laughs> uh, we, 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 oh, we do, 
we do this for fun. We just it's a release from the stress of everyday life. Yeah. I don't get away from my wife. He does get away from his wife. Yeah. Hey, I'll ask the question to both you guys. Uh, what did you think of uh, digging in uh, digging in Virginia soil? Uh, you guys went to the uh, uh, what was that? Just dig it or uh, just go detecting? Just go detecting. That's it. What did you guys think of that? Uh, we lucked out on the site because we were using VLF machines. We were using the AT Max there, and uh, we, we were just outside of Culpeper, and Culpeper is known for its red soil, it's red clay, whatever you want to call it. And it's a really high ground balance and the BLF machines don't penetrate it very well. Hmm. We, we jumped out of the truck and I ground balance. I'm like 86 guys. <laughs> we're good. To get. Um, now we, we definitely lucked out. I mean, there was some places on the property that, you know, the ground balance went up a little bit, but for the most part, we had no problems getting plenty of depth. Yeah. That was, it was, I, I love those organized hunts. Do you? I was going to say, how often do you get to? How often do you get to organize hunts? Something you looking to do more of in the coming years, or? Uh, I would love to do more of them. I mean, we're talking about you know trying to weasel our way into digging in Virginia as well and getting into more things like that. Yeah, there's some uh, stuff over in Carolinas. I think there's some hunts over in the Carolinas, and and there's some in Florida. And we got one here in Colorado. You guys need to come out here for a rush to the Rockies hunt in Colorado. Uh, a little bit of a different hunt. It's a planted hunt, but it sure is about the camaraderie and getting together with people and uh, getting to meet people. It's a, it's a lot of fun. My uh, treasure hunt club puts it on. Yeah, those are, those are fun as well. Yeah. Our our club it does a closed hunt for just the members, and they, they do an open hunt for anybody who wants to get in. Actually, actually I think they're not going to do it anymore. I think they said something about no, they're, 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 they're not going to do it this year, I don't think. I don't think they're doing it. Just one of them. I don't, I think I don't know. Doing I'm not a doctor. <laughs> How many members do you have in your club, Kurt? Oh, I don't even know. It's It's got to be at least, I'm going to say 60 or 70. I thought it was like 100 or more. Well, it might be more yeah. than that. Good size. Good size club. It's gotten big over the years. A lot of people show up to, to meet us, and then they're disappointed that they <laughs> joined the club because we're just yeah. some guys, you know, metal infected and making yeah. fun they, of each other. They didn't say anything funny. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Hey, where'd I'm you so get that hat? The loot. I'm sorry. So I'm so burnt out by the end of the day. Like right now, I'm just like, you know, woke up at, you know, hours before the sun came up, met up with him, drove a couple hours, went door knocking, found a permission, digging all day, jump in the truck, drive all the way home. Well, most of the time I'm getting off at six in the morning. You're just leaving. Yeah. Or we're, like, we're both getting there's off There's a six. lot of times where like I work 24-hour shifts yeah. and he works at night shifts as well. And like what people didn't know about like Brad's gold coin episode. Which was amazing, was by the way. From work, and I was up all night long running calls. I didn't have a single second I sat down, laid down, took a nap, any of that stuff. That day happened. I ran home, went to bed, went back to work for another 24 hour shift. I was dragging. Like, that's why, like, when the gold coin happened, I was just like, <laughs> what is happening? And then, like, it was broken. And I'm like, why am I still filming? Like, this is like, I don't know what to do right now. You guys are in that silly, like, in that silly mode. Uh, boy, yeah, you get slap you. happy. You slap happy. I live my sure. life slap happy. <laughs> that was an amazing episode, though, but I tell you, uh, that was one of my favorite ones I watched. That was just incredible. <clears throat> we're being asked if we're going to bone and this April. year we went to bone last year i bone. do not know if we're yeah, going we to bone this year April. with chig chig's going to bone yeah. chig's getting bone this year yeah let's call him boner boner <laughs> aqua boner aqua boner that's great man we have to have a shirt made hey but uh, no, i was watching these guys in england this guy uh, hopius maximus i don't know if you guys ever seen his channel but he dug a piece of a hammered gold coin and he shows on hopius maximus and he pulls it out of the dirt and he's looking at it right and he's in this field he's hunted forever and he says you know i think this is the missing piece of the piece i found three years ago and then he cuts his video to his saves box at home and yet he goes yep here it is and he puts it together and it's an exact match man <laughs> what are the odds of that of finding you know the second piece of a cut coin you know, i found 
Well, it that, wasn't a cut. It was purposely broken. But last year, I found two halves of the same half real. Yes, that was like, amazing. I mean, I got lucky. They're five feet away from each other. But <laughs> it's still really cool. You know, yeah. a little tiny sliver of a little silver coin. It's like a 60 signal. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm thinking pull tab, you know, or a button. That pull up little half of a broken half real, and then I get a signal right next to it, and it's yeah. the other half of the same half real. Yeah. Uh, Doug, Doug Johnson wants to know that if you tell property owners you're going to make a video when you're uh, and you're going to be posting it to YouTube, do you disclose that to your property owners when you're asking permission? Or uh, it depends on the property, honestly. I mean, we we try to, to keep their uh, their how I try not to film the house too much and you know give away like any of their personal stuff or where they live and stuff like that. Some places we do, some places we don't. Uh, the place where I finally got my cut piece of pistorine this year, you know, I, you know, the guy was outside and I popped it up. I knew what it was. I knew it was a cut Spanish coin or a cut silver coin of some sort. And I went over and talked to Brad. I'm like, this is what I have. I was like, let's go get the guy. And we invited him over and I was like, just so you know, I'm going to take a little video. We'd like to, you know, document what we find. And uh, he was he was he was cool with it. Wow. <clears throat> Mark Thomas asked a question. He said, "How many hours per week do you average digging? Do you think how many hours do you think you put in a week?" I wish I knew. I mean, when we go out, it's sun up to sun down, depending if we're door knocking or not. <laughs> to most <laughs> most weekends. <laughs> oh, no. oh, the wife says a lot. A lot. Um, <laughs> so I most, don't know. most I mean, weekends or. We're, we're more or less weekend warriors, just like everyone else. Sometimes like today, like Bill and I will get out there in the week. But when you see like, you know, Brad out or Bob out, it's usually a weekend. Unfortunately, yeah. those guys work nine to five jobs, so they can't dig during the week. Right. Um, I did have a question, Carolina. Hey, Zach Bird's in the house. What's up, brother? What's up, Zach? I was actually going to call you yesterday. I, I, need, I need to touch base with you and chat it up a little bit. Um, somebody in the chat said something about like, what's my best line? For like getting permissions and uh i've changed it up a little bit here and there but i pretty much keep it the same and like when getting permissions or going up and knocking on somebody's door i don't care how many times you do it you, you you're gonna be nervous pretty much every time but i've tried to you know come up with a little saying or whatever and i'll i'll say it to myself like a couple of times a day or like you know randomly like talk to the wall or talk to the mirror and be like, Oh, excuse me. You know, sorry for bothering you. It, it's always easier to catch people outside, but cold knocking somebody's door is always nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, my bigger question. When do you sleep? I sleep at work. When do you sleep? <laughs> um, Good not very, Good not answer. enough. Yeah. But I usually, I'll, I'll break it all the way down for you. You know, I knock on the door. They answer it. The first thing out of my mouth is sorry for bothering you. Cause mm -hmm. I, I hate when people knock on my door, like, you know, like, what are you doing here? What are you selling me? Sort of thing. So I always say, sorry for bothering you. I tell them who I am. My name's Kurt. I tell them what I do. I'm a local firefighter and I'm also a big history nerd. And your, your house is beautiful or your property is beautiful. I always like throwing a compliment. And then I say, my friends and I do metal detecting as a hobby. I wonder if you could, you could do some metal detecting on your property. Or if there's anywhere in your property, I wonder if we could do some metal detecting in your fields or, you know, the hardest thing is knocking on the door. And just after that, it's just talking to people. I don't, you know, a lot of people say you get permissions because you say you're a fireman and like this, that, and the other thing. I was like, I use that because a lot of people know firemen. Like I pretty much everybody knows a fireman somewhere. And like, oh, do you know, blah, 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 station this. I'm like, oh yeah, I actually went to the academy with him or, you know, yeah, something yeah. along those lines, but it, it doesn't matter who you are. People have no problem with saying no to me. Yeah. Trust me, yeah. I get plenty of no's. Um, you ever get any revokes? You ever get uh, somebody tells you, yeah, and then you get all your equipment oh, yeah. out, you get out on the field, and they're like, oh, hey, wait a minute, I changed my mind. Uh, I don't think this is going to work. They're like, you guys are actually digging, or like they see how many like targets you're actually digging, they think you're actually finding stuff. Yeah. It's just like, well, <laughs> it's not always that easy. It's not. We had a Everyone home. I gave on Oak Island. It's from Bob. <laughs> yeah. You guys heading Bob there? Is that, show. <laughs> is that one of the uh, one of the places you're <laughs> heading to this next year? I wish. Oak Island. 
Yeah. And if they want us to show us show everybody what's on that island, we'll gladly go up there and show them what's on that <laughs> or what's not on that island. Yeah. Uh, and Tony and I got a permission one time and, you know, the, uh, the husband said, yeah, and it was a, an old like 1920s house and we were working this old neighborhood and we started, started digging. And you could tell the wife, she was in the house yelling through the uh, screen door. She didn't want to have any part of it, you know? So she's like, uh, you can tell she just didn't want to have any part of it. So we're out there and we find our first find and it, Tony found it. It was a really cool, like old, uh, Davy Crockett belt buckle, like an old kid's Davy Crockett buck buckle, you know, piece of Americana. Right. So he goes, you find something? And we go, yeah, we kind of did. And he comes over to watch. Well, here she come, like, full-on sprint from the house. Slams open the screen door, full-on sprint. Looks over his shoulder, looks at it, and goes, ah, that's nothing. And storms back into the house, you know, and we're like, you know, the guy thought it was pretty cool, but she she wasn't too impressed. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've gotten permissions where the, the hermeter literally followed us around every single hole. Is that right? And, like, you know, here's another wheat penny. You want this wheat penny? And here you go. We found another one. Yeah. You know, it's every, every single property is different. Yeah. Where exactly like, you are you know, guys at? Where exactly are you guys at, Kurt? We, we, we're, we all live in Maryland. In Maryland. Yeah. Do you guys have a historical like, society that you're associated with? Right in the middle of the East Coast. Hmm. We travel all up and down it now. Yeah. You do a lot of traveling. Do you have yeah. historical societies you guys are tied to or anything like that or that you're involved with or your clubs yeah. involved with or something? Yeah, our, our our club we've we've done multiple digs for historical societies around Maryland. Um, we have a few the Benson Hammond House. We did uh, a few few early videos from 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 that early eighteen hundreds. I think it was about eighteen oh four. Actually, there was a I don't know. There's a lot of history on that property that dates back earlier than that. But there's a couple a uh, couple different museums and. Uh, historical societies that we've we've gone and dug and donated everything or just they picked through what they've wanted like there's this one historical society trying not to name where it is but uh all they wanted they they have a whole bunch of documentation about crop pickers checks and uh our club went down there and a few people found these crop pickers tokens or crop pickers checks and the lady was so happy about it because that's all she wanted and since then, we've had found a handful of them on the properties, and they get to display them in the museums. Yeah. Down south detecting, uh, Zach over there wants to know, hey, uh, Kurt, have you ever hunted old courthouse before? Have you ever been on a courthouse property? I don't think any of us have, no. No, I don't think I've been on a courthouse. Zach sir tears it up, man, south down, to, uh, down south detecting. <laughs> he's been tearing up this one courthouse for I don't know how long, but uh, he's been finding a lot of great, great finds there for sure. Um you ever like, been... like... my, my happy place is in a farm field, just yeah. like in the middle of nowhere where you can see the dirt and like hunt with your eyes for arrowheads or Native American artifacts and swing your machine. It's... Brad will say the same thing. It's, it's just my happy place. Yeah. Sensory fences. overload sometimes. No dog fences. No dog fences. <laughs> I'm going to get through some of these questions here. I was looking. Mark Branton wants to know, Kurt, have you ever been approached by any networks? For your product, well, the, the YouTube networks are like actual. You've been approached, I mean, yeah. been approached yeah, by any so TV networks? Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been multiple offers, and we've actually gone to actual contracts with some of them, and we decided it wasn't for us. Yeah. <clears throat> Have you ever okay. uh, ran into any problems with hunters out there in those fields that you guys uh, that you guys detect? Hunters. Um, you, you, you got to, they, they have priority. I mean, the, this past month, December is about the worst when rifle season opens up for deer hunting and, you know, they get priority. Old bottles. At least <laughs> 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 so all about the bottles. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, we, we haven't been like, uh, ran off any places. We, we respect the hunters first. Yeah. Most of them pay to get on the properties, and we're asking to keep around there for, for free. Yeah, Which is like, it, it's such a crazy hobby. Like, you knock on somebody's door, you know, it's this beautiful historic property, and can I dig holes in your yard? <laughs> and people let you do it. it. It blows my mind. Not everybody, but they do. Yeah. If somebody asked a question about what we do with our finds, you know, our good finds. 
you know, if we keep him or if the landowner wants him, what do we give him to him or not? Yeah, I mean, there's been, there, there's, there's been every property owner is different. Like I said, some some property owners will follow you around every single hole and see what you're digging. And uh, like a lot of them just want to see what you found. Yeah. Like today, the, we showed the guy everything we found. I had multiple silvers and you know, I showed him everything. Yeah. He's like, that's cool. Actually, the only thing I didn't get on video, Mark found a Roy Rogers, like old, oh, yeah. like 50s cap gun. It was actually collector, hmm. you know. That's it. Like the a, property owner is an FFL, like he, he deals firearms. Oh, wow. So he showed the, the guy the, the cap gun and he brought it in the house and cleaned it up and looked it up. And, and like, it was the only thing like he was actually excited about. Like I showed him like large scents and silvers and he's like, oh, that's cool. Cool, you guys are finding stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> Surprisingly, because the, the place was pretty beat. I mean, it's been infected a bunch over the years, and the, the back was all filled in, which is like the worst thing ever. You land a 1600s property and half of it's filled dirt. Yeah. But we had a good time. Yeah. It'll be an episode in a couple of weeks. <clears throat> yeah, I look forward to that. I see this question a lot. Jerry Mon Jer Jeremy Monaco wants to know do you ever sell any of your finds? I, I see that question a lot, and most people have on here as guests uh, of the Digger Spotlight. I've, I've personally never sold a thing that I found. Like I said, I've donated things. I've given things to friends, um, but I've never personally sold one thing that I've ever found. One of my best rings I ever found, Brad offered to buy off of me, and I gave it to him. It's his wedding ring. Mm, that's the really cool. Yeah. Wedding band. Yeah. He wanted it and said, "Well, <laughs> it's just sitting in my collection. Here you go, buddy." Yeah. All my finds, my daughter takes. <laughs> All his finds, his daughter takes. Apparently. <laughs> You got a lot of great, fa great fans uh, out there that watch your videos, and uh, you know they're uh, a lot yes. of them know a lot of in a lot of inside information from watching tons of your videos and stuff. So, Bill, if you yeah. see if you see any mention of some of that stuff, some of the stuff's going by, it's kind of going right over my head. Uh, so, if you see something that needs to be pointed out, make sure you uh, you say something about it. Um, I'm someone he wants to know uh, where you got that hat from, Kurt. This hat was from I think. A sporting goods company, uh, Dick Sporting Goods. I actually got this hat from. Yeah, Ken Hurst. Do you yeah, have a white like, whale? Was, was, I think six dollars and ninety nine cents. I couldn't couldn't say no. Yeah, that's a great hat. Do I have a new white whale? Yeah, it's you only have. have one white whale. And you already got it. You know, there's, there's, you can only have one white whale. Once you find it, you're done. I mean, obviously, there's a million things I want to dig. But well, that was your white. Yeah, was your leading, right? You found your leading, right? That was yeah, your I found it. No, yeah. my white whale from forever was a barber quarter. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my friend Chris Quinn gave me his first barber quarter he ever dug for good yeah. luck. And finally, I found one. If it was just like one of those things. It's like I found multiple seeds and Spanish coins and yeah. everything in between, but I couldn't find a barber quarter to save my life. Yeah. Okay. Until I did. Yeah. It's real cool. Do you uh? Walmart. You, Everybody keeps bringing up Walmart. Yeah, what's this all about Walmart? What's that all about? Somebody wants to say you go it's, digging Walmart. Well, it was a nickname for one of our sites because the site had everything. It did it. It just had everything. Walmart, the, you know everything. Civil War. Yeah, I love when you guys show your trash pile. You guys dig a lot of trash, and it's always it's always cool we, for people to see all. that to see the uh, see the reality of it. Yeah, you got to dig it all. Like, um, I'm not going to make a video of this, us digging trash, but I also right. want to highlight the trash to show you, to show everyone that you have to dig trash. You can't. When you're at <clears throat> these early properties, I don't care the signal. I don't care how deep it is, how shallow it is. You cannot skip signals. Yeah. If you're skipping signals, you're you're skipping good things. Right. 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 What a white whale. The white whale is something that you probably should have found by now like some people are like my white whale is a gold coin well, not everybody's gonna find a gold coin your white whale is like you know i've never found an indian head penny but i, I dig 1800s properties every week yeah you know, that, that's a white whale like for me it was a barber quarter like i found barber dimes and seeded everything and older coins but i couldn't find a barber quarter yeah I for, i'm sorry i forgot who asked the question but somebody wanted to know the history or the story behind eat your lunch <laughs> are you I able to say the episode is it's a, it might be i don't know why i'm pulling this out of the air but i think it's episode six 
the episode name is Silver and Gold. And in the episode, Bill wouldn't eat his lunch. I'm like, dude, we're out here digging these holes in frozen ground and like you need to replenish yourself, like go eat your lunch. And I thought it was funny that somebody would tell a 300 and who knows how many pound <laughs> man to go eat his lunch. And uh, after that, it, it stemmed into like a weekly shout oh, out where I'd be like, you know, we give somebody a shout out and at the end say, eat your lunch. Sure. No. Somebody um, asked how many times you left me at the gas station. <laughs> how many times I left? I left you at the gas station? Yeah. I've left Bob at the gas station just so he'd drive with you. <laughs> How many times have you stood me up? <laughs> We're supposed to go dig in and like Bill just won't show up and he turns the cell phone off. Amy Smith, the Uper girl, wants to know, did you know that Foo and Smoother Than Brad's Butt would become permanent fixtures in the detecting community? <laughs> did I know or Great did, question, do I Amy. Know? Did you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's happening. <laughs> I never, I, nothing's ever planned. It just yeah. sort of happened. Yeah, that kind of goes along with what we were talking about earlier with you. Just know. like, did you know like, this was going to happen? People, you know, people want to know like the story behind Foo Foo Juice. Like the, uh, the first, the first video I, I did, you know, I found a, a seated Liberty dime and, you know, I bring it like I used to just bring my, silver coins home and run them underwater like i wouldn't rub them i wouldn't do anything i'd get them home and clean them off but once i started doing videos like i need something to clean my silvers in the field to show the details and the mints and the you know talk about them like the year they are so i started bringing up actually at first it was just a a little bottle of water and i would throw the coin in there and shake it up and pull the coin out and then like i found a spray bottle and one day i called it Foo Foo Juice and the name <laughs> stuck. And it'd be funny. I made a sticker that said Foo Foo Juice. <laughs> right. <laughs> plans for 2018. Plans for 2018 or 2019. Yeah, I made that mistake on the thumbnail, didn't I? <laughs> I think I'd put 2000. We, we don't make plans. We, we, we're, we're like, I texted Bill like 10 o'clock last night. <laughs> right, we're going. Yeah, I, we have a little chat between all of us and. You know, it's like, who's free tomorrow? Yeah. I was supposed to be working. Yeah. That's, uh, that's crazy. Hey, I'll say, I'll say again, for those of you that are just joining us, this is Digger Spotlight. I'm DK with Adventures in Dirt, and we're talking to Kurt and Bill with the Hoover Boys. Uh, please sure to join uh, join in the chat by leaving your questions in there. And uh, if I'm asking Kurt a question, yeah, feel free to answer the question yourself. Uh, Kurt, I'll get on to some of your finds. Said when you think back your finds, you know, and your your wow t your wow finds. I know you know you you've probably got a number of them, but uh, your top wow finds. You got it. You got something in mind that uh, really stands out in your head. There's there's a few that stick out. I mean, obviously the uh, the flowing hair chain scent. Um, other than that, this past year, my favorite find of the year was my pewter USA button I pulled out of the water. And it's in incredible in condition. Um, other than that, it's my, my War 1812 belt plate I found last year. That was an incredible That's find, yeah. Covered in gold gilt and just... Yeah. Nothing's thrown me back like that was when I figured out what it was. Yeah. Hey, as a matter of fact, I have a video clip of you finding that plate. Uh, let's go ahead and play it. We can talk over the top of it. You can you kind of tell me what you're thinking I, about on I, this I, one. I saw what it was. Like it came up, and it was just like the square. And I'm like, okay. I gave it a wipe, and it's just like, <gasps> and I just started backing up. And I turned on the camera when I was like back, and I came back into the shot. And it, it it was just so unexpected. Yeah. And like, there's are the moments in this hobby. It's like you get floored when you least expect it wow look at that holy cow i i knew i knew this it was a high tone it, it i knew it wasn't a coin because it, it was big like i you, you know the coin signal the, the sweet tight coin signal and we're just in a field that we had in success in it was the last thing i expected to see and you know when it came out i'm like here's a tag off a tractor or something i gave it a wipe and i saw that eagle and yeah. that's i just dropped it and backed up yeah look at that uh, thing just shining my gosh look at that it, it was hot that day too it looked hot it, that looked so dry and hot you guys were all sleeveless up. and wow yeah, it was it was 
somebody asked what my best is, it's a two center because Bob hasn't dug one yet. <laughs> I like that. Your favorite find is a two cent piece because Bob's never found one. Yeah. Have you got a flying eagle yet? No. No flying eagle. You and Bob. I'll and... get that before Bob does. <laughs> yeah. Bill, what's on top of your bucket list? Or top oh, three yeah. top three spots on your he bucket list? He still wants to find a padlock, like I, an early padlock. I, I, like I want a railroad pad, padlock and uh, two reals. I really honestly would love to dig a two reals. Who doesn't want a two reals? Yeah, that's pretty cool. But, uh, I'm very it, – It's I, I just like the simple stuff like the lock, you know? Well, like in 2018, like my goal for the year was to find a large scent in a body of water. That's all I wanted to do. Like I've been water hunting multiple, you know – We've we've done plenty of water hunting, but we've yeah. never had success doing it until this past year. What I really want is a hutch bottle, Hutchinson, like he found just out of nowhere. Bill's all about the glass. He yeah. wants to do more bottle hunting. Stuff. Yeah, Br Brandon over at Adventure Archaeology, boy, he's always he's always pulling those hutches, and he's like, oh my gosh, incredible, incredible finds, and they're down so darn deep. I don't know if you ever got, got a chance to catch any of his videos, Kurt, but uh, or you either, Bill, but man, they're down. 12 feet looks like nine feet maybe wow. and, uh, i watch his videos a lot actually yeah it's good stuff good stuff you guys ever detect up in new york the lou d9 I d7 ever swung a clue in new york <laughs> no, i went up to the finger lakes once with a buddy and i brought my detector but we are too busy uh partying <laughs> yeah. fishing and partying yeah where were you guys at when you were hunting on the beach that time uh was that was that brad's wedding uh, oh, that was, that was his, his uh bachelor, bachelor party. party? Mm. Yeah, we were we were we we're over by Atlantic City. Ah, okay. Yeah, it was a pretty cool. That's pretty cool video. Yeah, it's fun lucky be. Leo. <laughs> <laughs> First signal, big old diamond gold ring. It's just like, are you kidding me? Yeah. How how uh do you watch many other YouTubers, or are you up to speed on many other YouTubers, or is that kind of out of your pocket, I, you know what I mean? I used to watch way more than I do now. Yeah. I mean, most YouTubers are too busy creating content to watch content, but I watch a lot of YouTube. You know, you know, I'll catch a video here and there, and uh, I do, you know, I watch, I watch a lot of undigging-related YouTube as well. Yeah. Kirk, uh, what else are you into, Kirk? What other kind of uh, what what other kind of uh, hobbies or videos do you like? Are you like outdoor type stuff, survival type stuff, or are you uh, bowling channel? I don't know. You, <laughs> it's got uh, firearms. Out. Firearms. Uh, I like cooking shows. I do yeah. a lot of cooking. Uh, I just got a, a electric smoker for Christmas, so I've been been learning how to smoke meat correctly. Awesome. And it's been a lot of fun doing that. Uh, other than that, um, you know, fishing, losing and scratch off, <laughs> losing and scratch off. Yeah, he's very good at that's that. From Brad. That's from Brad. Actually, we we bought two ten dollars scratch offs today. <clears throat> one hit for twenty and one hit for fifty. Yeah. So we, it was a good day all around. You got to watch that smoking and barbecue. I'm on a competition barbecue team. <laughs> It's, yeah. another, it's another one of my hobbies, and uh, it can I get it can get just as addictive, brisket. man. <laughs> What'd you do? I I butchered my first brisket. I didn't. I pulled it off too soon, and it was too tough. Rubber, yeah. yeah. I redeemed myself with the pulled pork. I did. I did a nice pork. Like That's awesome. Bob, then you like scrapbooking? <laughs> scrapbooking. <laughs> you like the scrapbooking? <laughs> How did you meet up? How did I meet these guys? Is that what the yeah, that's what it was? Uh, mostly through our our local treasure club. We belong to the Maryland Free State Treasure Club, and uh, that's where my buddy that got me into the hobby when we were like twelve years old or so. He belonged to the club back in the day. So when I got back into it as an adult, I was like, I need permits to dig public properties in our area or public parks and stuff. So I had to go through a club to get signatures to, to be able to hunt these public parks. And uh, I joined the club because that's the club I knew of. Luckily, they're, they're still around. And I met Bill there and Brad and Leo. And Bob was 
you know, a random Facebook message, like some crazy guy that wanted a sticker for his Fufu bottle. <laughs> yeah, he had, he had, a, he had a, a, a blue water bottle he got from Walmart and he wanted a, a sticker for it. So I met up with him. He, he surprisingly lived like five, 10 minutes from me. And uh, I met up with him and he, he talked and he never stopped talking and he's never stopped talking to this <laughs> thing. <laughs> Kirk Loki was on top. Yeah, yeah. We we wouldn't we would not have as much fun as we do if it wasn't for Bob. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure like I said earlier, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff off camera that uh is just as entertaining as what's on camera. The off camera stuff. When Bob's know. around he makes it it's memorable. You'll never forget it. <laughs> yeah. Someday, someday yeah, I hope to take with you guys. And expand that. Yeah, yeah, we, we do plan on doing a, a wrap up like we did last year, obviously just for twenty eighteen. Yeah. Past the last year we did twenty sixteen and seventeen together and it was like a forty minute video. <laughs> it was ridiculous. But now we plan on we haven't filmed it yet. Um we still have with today's episode, we have I think one more video from twenty eighteen and then hopefully we'll get together this next weekend or two and film a wrap up. Yeah, but yeah we we on over everything that we dug out of the ground this year. Yeah. I really appreciate your mail call videos too. They're pretty cool. You get your kids involved and stuff. Yeah. It's really appreciative of that. Let me apologize right now because I have a stack of stuff on my pay yeah. my table right here. And like the hardest thing for me to do is to find time. And I like doing the mail call with the kids to get them involved. And I know a lot of people like sending them stuff. Yeah. And I have stuff that are that's months old that I need to get to. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Kirk Loki wanted to know that of all the Hoover boys, who all is in the 1500s coin club? Bob. Just Bob and yeah. Steve. Bob and Steve. <laughs> Brad has a Maravedis, which is a hammered silver, from, or a hammered copper from 1643. I believe that's his oldest Mine's coin. What do you have? My uh, William. Yeah, you have a, a Williams. I have a Williams and Mary is probably my oldest identifiable coin. Found my oldest silver last year ever, seventeen eleven, cut two reals. Oh, nice. <clears throat> uh, let me see where that question went to. Uh, I get lost. <laughs> There's a lot of people comment. I appreciate your comments. Appreciate you guys uh, tearing up this chat. It's awesome. Uh, oh, swing in the free state, and I also thought somebody else had the same type of question. Does Kurt still watch the Stealth Diggers? I know he used to be obsessed with them, and I love watching the collaboration video from two years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. I still keep in touch with those guys. That's awesome. That is awesome. Hey, Bill, what kind of uh, what other hobbies are you into? Uh, fishing, grabbing. That's about it. I don't know. Reading the chat like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing, making faces. Yeah. Like, I'm making faces because it's really like small. real tiny. He's like, <laughs> uh, working on cars, you know, stuff like that. Just, yeah. I mainly devote most of my time the same way to my family and work and digging. Yeah. So, and I'll uh, dig two real, two, two centers, you know, stuff like that. Kurt, what was your first machine? Well, my first machine was a little Radio Shack job. Uh, I believe it had an orange handle and like a turn on knob with like, you know, zero to eight. And then I it had like had a black coil, it. like that big. But my first real machine when I was like, I think 12 years old was uh, a White's XLT. Yeah. I still have it. It still works. Yeah. When I got back into the hobby, I, I pretty much came across it in the basement. And I was like, I need to do that again. Yeah. I needed like a reason to do something. Yeah. more and i saw it dusted it off put some batteries and it went out and mellow tech in my yard and at the time i was in like a 1930 house and i had fun i just found some wheat pennies and stuff like that yeah. i just you know, always look scared and confused <laughs> because he is. that's his wife <laughs> <laughs> his wife has that question. hey let me make a quick yes, announcement here very shy. what's that who's who's shy leo no, he's not really. shy he's he's very soft spoken. And his yeah. wife makes him that way, I'm telling you. <laughs> she beats him. 
Let me do a quick announcement here real quick. Hey, in a minute and a couple more questions, a few more questions from now, we're going to get to some giveaways. we got a giveaway. Actually, we got two giveaways to do tonight. Uh, I'm going to give away a, uh, a weekly dirt T-shirt of mine, um, and I think uh, Kurt has something he wants to give away as well. Uh, so we'll do my T-shirt first, and how we usually do our uh, – if you're new to the Digger Spotlight, how we do our giveaways is I'm going to give you a range of numbers – uh, between one number and another number and then you're going to go ahead and pick a number and type it into the chat you can pick multiple numbers you can pick as many numbers as you want just one entry uh, 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 and it, one one number an entry but you can do you know as, as many as you can without getting kicked out of the chat I know sometimes it slows you up um, but uh, and we'll look for it you know I've given Kurt the number um, let me see. I've given Tony a 5280 Adventures the number, so he's ineligible for the uh, for the draw or for the uh, the the number for the entry. But uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a couple minutes. I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up that that's how we do it. And so at some point, I'll talk to you. I'll tell you to go, and you guys start doing numbers. Don't do it yet. This is not the time. Um, and then we'll get to uh, Kurt's giveaway. And one of your lucky uh, lucky people in chat here will walk away with a weekly dirt T-shirt, and 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 then something Kurt's got for you guys too. So let we're only me, giving uh, away Bob. It's nothing special. <laughs> Bob's Bob's going with the highest the highest bidder, or are you guys just doing just a random draw for Bob? Just random draw. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. You know gotcha. we ain't gonna get. He, he's old. We're not gonna get much for him. All right. This is <laughs> um this is what the weekly dirt shirt looks like. It's a black shirt. It's got kind of a loud design on it but uh, yeah i'll go ahead and send one of these out to you guys and uh, we get to this in a minute um you ever go do any hunting on your own bill oh uh, yeah i if i if i'm at home like i if i'm at my parents i'll take my daughter out i won't go by myself but usually the only time i do do by myself is with my daughter yeah so yeah. and you ever film it yourself or you just go out no. for, for pleasure yeah I just go out. I, I think I would probably embarrass my daughter trying to figure out how to film like Kurt does all the time. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm looking in, uh, looking in chat to see if I missed up any questions here. Digging six oh six in the house. How you doing, there, buddy? FL Thunder, Garnet Kai, Michael. How you doing, Mark? Chris, Mark Coos. Hope I said your last name correct. Ben Franco G. Good to see you, Tim Cup. Tim, what's up, Tim? Thanks for the support this year. Welcome, uh, welcome your comments. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, hey, if you guys also, if you have uh, recommendations for other guests you want to see here on this Digger Spotlight show, if you're enjoying the show, make sure you leave it in the comments down below the video and give me a suggestion. Yeah, we'll listen to it and uh, bring on some people. We got some great guests coming up uh, later this year. Um, should be great. Beth D. Hello, Beth D. How you doing? She's in my treasure hunting club. Good to see you. Earl from Virginia. Good to see you. Awesome. Pool tab commando. Awesome. 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 Uh, let me get this leg stretched out here. So I'm looking for some more questions. So uh, with you, um, you said you wanted to go to England, right, Kurt? You said you might want to travel across the pond and and go to yeah. England. Uh, you have any other place that you're interested in going? Uh, you talked about maybe digging digging in Virginia. Uh, have any other place you're really interested in going to dig, or you pretty much – you guys travel no, to it. You're, I mean, you're in a great place for it. Come on, man. You know, that, that, that doesn't matter. Like to me, honestly, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I'll go to the park and, you know, dig iron nails with the guys all day long. and We'll have just as much fun as if we're popping largies every three feet. Yeah. Um, like, like I said, we, we, we fly by the seam of our pants. I'd like to take Bob back to his favorite place, North Carolina. I mean, he would love that. <laughs> Robbie Stover wants to know, do you scrap your metal uh, junk finds or do you toss them? Okay. Uh, I, I separate the, the copper, the lead, and the brass. And I recycle that stuff. Everything else gets thrown in the recycling bin. Yeah, yeah. More people asking about Walmart. <laughs> Whatever happened to that Walmart property? You guys still go back there or is it pretty much? Uh, no, no. Ever right. since the historical society took it over and, deemed it a no detecting place we haven't been back we joke about it every single day though We're like let's go nighthawk walmart <laughs> <laughs> but we would never do that we don't do that so. either one uh, of you go ahead kurt no it's just it's just one of those places <clears throat> we, we we always talk about it you know 
we've by it closing down, it's opened up so many more doors to us. Cause like, I was like, all right, time to sack up and go knock on doors. And, uh, but I'd still love a place that we could just go and do what we used to do. Yeah. Somebody asked and my first find was with my detector. Oddly enough, my first ever find was a silver quarter for Washington. I still got it. Your first find ever was ever a silver was quarter? Silver Washington in my backyard. Yeah, it was at my parents' house. Again, it's luck. Do either one of you two no. ever do any gold prospecting? You ever getting any gold, gold panning or anything like that? Kirk? I'd love to go gold panning, but the so only good. thing in Maryland is flower gold. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part, from what I've heard. Well, yeah. we, we actually had a, a, a group of Maryland uh, gold prospect panner guys come to one of our metal detective meetings and talk to us and like, has anybody in this room found a gold ring with your metal detector? And like, you know, whoever raised their hands, like, well, every single person who has your, your hand raised has found more gold than we have. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever get a chance to watch Dr. Tone, Brandon's channel? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I'm watching Brandon's channel for, for, I actually have a video of my kids head banging to his intro. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Plugmaster Four says good night, Jeff. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in, being part of the Digger Spotlight. Uh, we will. Uh, why don't we get to this giveaway? Why don't we go ahead and do this now? This is going to get crazy. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Um, so, Kurt, you're going to have to help me watch. Maybe you can whisper the number to Bill's there. Maybe he he can help watch. Uh, I, I know. Do you? okay. I right. okay. Them. All right, everyone, think of your number. We're going to do a number range. Let's say between 1 and 100, and when you're ready, go ahead and start entering your numbers, and we're going to look for the number that we pre-selected. And whoever the lucky winner is that picks the right number, you're going to win a weekly dirt T-shirt. So let it roll. 1 to 100. Here they go. So we put in a number. Come on, let's go. Put in a number. Yeah, they'll start rolling here, and it'll explode. Here it goes. Here it goes. Oh, my oh gosh. gosh. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh. no. Stop. Stop. I, I see I it already. It. I saw it somewhere. I saw it. I see it. I see it. Uh, Tony, maybe you can help uh, take a look, too. I saw it. It happened pretty early. I knew it would. Hey, guys, this is about the most random way I can think of doing it. If you guys ever have a, another suggestion for you, let me know. But it's purely random, and I know it goes quick, and that's always good to get it done and get it out the door. Um, wow, there's a lot of people out there. Yeah, Thank yeah. you all for yeah. tuning in. It's awesome. Uh, let's see here. So let me scroll up here. First person Jeff I Miller saw. About the spoon. He sent me a silver spoon with the uh, – the letter F engraved in it for my last name. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. That's awesome. Bug killer. So the lucky number was 33. And the first person I saw to type in 33 was Buckeye Banger 89. Kurt, did you guys, uh, and Bill, did you guys see anybody before that? Tony, can you go no, back and scroll up and check? Up, you know, can I go back on the chat? I don't even you know. You can. You can. Can't. If you have a scroll button, you can kind of scroll yeah, back up on it. You're going to have to. I'm to wake my mouse up. <laughs> so, hey, if this works out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let Tony make the final decision since he's there in chat already. But if it uh, if it works out, Buckeye Banger 89, hey, congratulations to you. You've won a weekly dirt t shirt. Uh, feel free to send me an email. At, I won't let it fill up anymore. DK at Adventures in Dirt is my email. DK at Adventures in Dirt dot com. Buckeye yeah, Banger eighty nine. You want to send me an email? Let me know your shirt size and your mailing address, and I'll get one eyed out to you. That'd be awesome. And thanks everyone for participating in that. That was pretty crazy. Uh, so uh, let's do it again. Let's, do, yeah, it let's again? do that again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So, uh, Kurt, who you said you had uh, something. Who wants a OD Green PHB T shirt? Not even on eBay yet. Oh, I do. I need to get these things up there, but it, it, it's our classic design, Uber Boys and uh, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness in the yeah. front, That's and awesome. OD Green. It's our new shirt. Awesome. I haven't even started selling them yet yeah. because I'm lazy. No one you know, put I'm any numbers blind. in yet. we got to create the range, so no one put any numbers in. Everyone's guessing 33 now. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's a different you, number. You all get a shirt. You all get a shirt. <laughs> There's uh, 
That's awesome. We haven't started it yet, right? We haven't. Did, no, did no. They so, go or what's the deal? Yeah, uh, you pick a range. Why don't you pick a range of numbers? And as and soon we'll, as we'll, we'll do, we'll do one to a hundred again. Okay. And uh, bubble right. be tuna. Do it. Go. 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 It's live. Go. Put in go your it's live. Put in your number. <laughs> I know the number. Oh, 44. It's now 44, unfortunately. <laughs> Bob, you're clever. Right. Uh, one to one hundred. One to one hundred. Oh, I saw it. Okay, uh, stop. Jeremy. Did you Jeremy. It? Jeremy M. That's all I saw. Oh my goodness! Look at it blowing up. Oh, Ooh. boy, that goes quick because of the delay. You know what I mean? See what I'm saying? The delay hits, and all of a sudden, it's gone. So Holy let's scroll up now. and see. Uh, we, we were starting with digging six hundred six forty four is the starting number. So anybody above them was ending numbers before we said go. Uh, so let's go below. Dig in 606.44 and let's scroll down to. Here we uh, go. Um, why don't you say what the number was and say why the why you chose that number? It should be coming up. It was the last two digits on uh, Steve's coin that he dug in today's episode, which is 69. 69. I see Jeremy Monaco. Yep, that's first, it. Jeremy Monaco, 69, is the first 69. person to pick it. Right on. So, hey. So, uh, Jeremy, I guess uh, shoot me an email, thehooverboys at gmail.com. Thehooverboys at gmail.com, all lowercase. And uh, I will get that shipped out to you. Yeah. I'll throw in some fill and some uh, stickers and all that other stuff if you're interested. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, uh, Kurt had mentioned earlier, you know, that uh, he, that shirt's not even on eBay yet. And I did want to kind of bring up your eBay store. You know, the Hoover Boys, they have their own eBay store. Uh, kind of looks like this. I'm going to bring up an image of it. Uh, he's got some items on there. Uh, just a great eBay store. And you guys can get there by following the link in the description down below. In the description of this Digger Spotlight show, I've got links to the Hoover Boys YouTube page, which most of you, I hope, understand how to get there. Uh, I've also got a link to the Facebook page and also to uh, the eBay store. So make sure you visit those and show them some support. That would be great. Yeah, great shirt. Be, I gotta get me one of those. And like about that, it's like, I never expected that like, like the foo food, you like, yeah, we sell foo food bottles. And it's like, I never did that to sell food. People asked me people to want buy it, them. Right? Yeah, like, people want it. You wanna buy this? Okay. <laughs> and like, I, I made t-shirts or like uh, designed for us to, so we, you, have something to wear that we were you know this is what we do and this is who we are yeah and people wanted to buy them too so right everything right. that i sell is because people ask me to not because i'm trying to make money uh, what's up dr tones is dr tones in the house yeah brandon ray needs in the house brandon how you doing buddy got to listen to him a little bit last night on history seekers and then i had to run out and had to miss it so i had to catch it on the replay it was a great great interview brandon you did a great job over there you del you dished out a lot of great information so uh well done bud well done <clears throat> yeah so if people are still guessing numbers i'm sorry the giveaway's over uh y'all missed it uh tune into the next digger spotlight show uh be watching my channel for the next one to come up i usually run them twice a month uh usually beginning of the month end of the month somewhere around there uh, the next one I hope to do somewhere around January 30th. We're still trying to make the final decision there. Uh, and I've got a big announcement coming up here in the next couple of weeks regarding that. So stay tuned for that. Um, can people out of state join your metal detecting club, Kurt? Um, I mean, yeah, they over? can. It's not my club. It's the club we belong to. Hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have people from Pennsylvania. Greg, he's he's from Pennsylvania. Yeah. You know, as long as you pay the $25 membership fee, and, like we have a meeting this last Thursday of every month. Last Thursday of every month. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do group hunts? Do you guys go out as a group and go hunt? Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, we, we've, we've got on a, a bunch of different properties or if, you know, the higher ups can't find a property for the host to hunt, we'll, we'll go to a public park and play around there. Yeah. But besides that, like they, they do a close hunt for the members where they, you know, hide a bunch of silver coins in the grass and have a cookout and give away metal detectors. And it's always a good time. So our field <laughs> said, Kurt, you have a big announcement. You're late to the party. 
I already said Brian and I were thinking about going to uh, England. Go to England, do a little uh, metal detecting it vacation. Might, it, might be with, it might be with Brandon. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be great. We've yeah. never met the guy. He's like one of the... Uh... And leave me out of it. <laughs> you got to fork out the cheddar. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he just we're, got we're back. Still the, we're still yeah. talking about it. Nobody's, oh, nobody's. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was talking about his trip, his recent trip there last night, and it sounds like, a, sound like, sound like it was awesome. I, I need to get over there too. I've got a number of friends over there, and I've made even more since I've been doing this YouTube stuff. And I really just need to get over there, you know, Scotland and. Well, I, I can't, I can't wait to go to England and find wasted coppers over there. Somebody says cigars and meat sticks. Uh, that's great. Hey, you guys are asking some great questions tonight. I really appreciate that. It really helps, yeah, I, uh, you know. I saw a bunch of questions that just, like, it, the chat's been going so fast. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Pop said, I <laughs> wish I was a fireman. <laughs> uh, do you ever get false signals? Absolutely. I uh, actually just got a pulse machine for Christmas, the, the, the Garrett ATX. And uh, my first experience with that was not a good one. But my second experience, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. <clears throat> we talked about this earlier. Do you, meet, do you ever meet up with other diggers? I think you've done a number of videos over the years. Uh, you know, if you go back and watch some of your videos, you definitely have. Um, but, uh, and you talked today about maybe hooking up with uh, Dr. Tones and um, any other plans for any hooking up with any other collaborations or anything? There's there's no plans. There's there's never any plans. It's like, hey, let's let's do this. Let's meet up. Let's hang out. Let's have some fun. It's all about having fun. There's that one trip with that Adventures and Dirt guy. That uh, yeah, I think that's set up for what March or April, something like that. Yeah, I think I think I read that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Get with you guys. <laughs> I saw people let's, let's meet in the middle. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Johnny. What machine do you recommend for detecting now? Please, uh, thank you. Well, it's dark outside. Uh, the, the best metal detector that you can afford. Yeah. I always tell people, you know, Garrett's are very simple to, simple to learn, easy to operate, Whatever great for learning. You know, a lot of people start with the Garrett A series, but if you can afford it, get the AT series. That's what we've always smoked. Yeah. I, I've, I've sworn so many different detectives over the years. It's just the Garrett speak to me. It's, yeah. They speak my language. <clears throat> I know he's trying to place on the pizza. Yeah, pineapple. I've, I've eaten pizza with pineapple on it. Yeah. Hey, What's wrong with that? There's uh, I always heard, you know, the best tech detector out there is the one you learn to that. master, you know, the one you learn to really use well and stuff. And, uh, you know, I definitely can testify to that for sure. But, hey, let me ask you this. If you had to give advice, I'm going to give you two scenarios and then see what you would, would pick. You're going to advise somebody when they're getting into metal detecting. I'd probably just answer my own question. Either dig it all and learn your machine, open that machine up and dig it all and learn your sounds and learn your tones. Or get some success going, discriminate up, depending also where they're at. You know what I mean? They probably will not be in a field, but if they're in a park or something like that. Discriminate up, get some success, and then go from there and start branching out from there. I always run wide open, and that is zero discrimination. Like, on. Well, most well, some of my other machines, I've, I've ran a little bit of discrimination because, like, you can't. It's not as simple as a Garrett on the AT series. Like, you, I literally turn the machine on, I grab balance, and I go. You know, I, I keep you know the, the max. I run it in zero mode. And the AT Pro, it's called Pro mode. Um, on the AT Gold, it's this two, just just zero zero iron. And I want to hear iron. I want to know when I'm over an iron patch. I want to know. Um, that there's iron and other things in the ground. Yeah. <clears throat> like you, you can't run coins mode because like you, it knocks out sixty signals and that's button signals too. Yeah. Like yeah. and trimes and little silvers and Indians and I just run wide open and dig it all. Right. Now different strokes for different folks too. Like 
we show a lot of coins on our channel because we come across a lot of coins, but it's the relics and the personal items that mean more to me. Yeah. Where can I mail you a gift? You don't need to mail us anything. Your support's all we need. But uh, <laughs> if you want to email me at thehooverboys at gmail.com, I can uh, give you out the, the PO, and PO box information. Diana. Steven Weepert, is that, uh, is that Steven? From the episode? Yeah. Sorry, I don't know your last name, but it says, tell Kurt to take Mr. Smiley to England because they'll love him. <laughs> Steven, great episode, man. Really, really liked uh, watching you. Your Mr. Smiley. <laughs> Hot Dog wants to know you use your XP Deus anymore, and uh, we talked about that earlier, Hot Dog 70. Uh, I used it a couple times last year. It's, it's sitting in the corner right over there. My buddy, uh, Cody donor keeps asking me to buy it from me yeah so i'll ask my moderators too uh, they're reading some chat here uh if i've missed any questions you guys help me out go back copy and paste them in i appreciate that that'd be awesome so what's up how come no mustache lately ask swinging the free state uh, i i brought the must mustache back for uh for november i think it, it lasted like two episodes because i had a little bit of a beard before that I don't know. The like uh, the mustache just happened. You know, a couple guys and me at the firehouse were like, we're going to grow handlebar mustaches <laughs> or Fu Manchus or whatever you want to call it. And uh, for whatever reason, my wife liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept it there for a go. few years. And uh, it's, it's come and gone. Like, I try to bring it back every November. Right. I brought it back just in time for Brad to dig it. George Washington inauguration button. Amazing. Amazing. But yeah, the, the mustache comes and goes. Just like right now, I got a little shadow. I, I got to be cleanly shaven for work because I'm a firefighter. And you got to have a, a face face mask on that's got to seal tightly to your face or you let smoke in. Right. Smoke's not good. How long you been a firefighter, Kurt? Oh, since 2002. So, yeah. Long enough. <laughs> Bill, what are you doing these days? What uh, what kind of occupation are you in? Making really weird faces, looking at the chat, <laughs> squinting in the camera. I uh I drive the uh, emergency services trucks at uh on ninety five on the highway down here at the tunnels. All right. And I also volunteer as a firefighter. Gotcha. So. Hi, Logan. What software are you using to edit your videos these days, Kurt? Uh, says Real um, 1741. My uh, when I first started, I just used the stop program on my computer, which is Windows Movie Maker. My is good for rocks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, quarter hoarder? Um, I, I used Windows Movie Maker for I don't know <laughs> a bunch of months, a year, whatever it was, and then I I switched over to uh, Cyberlink. Cyberlink Power Director. I think originally it was 15. I think I have Cyberlink Power Director 17 now. Yeah. What's up, Jason? Good to see you, Court Order. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> Mustache is good for cleaning relics in a jam. That's awesome. How many years do I retire? I'd love to know. Um, I signed a contract where I could retire after 20 years for half of my salary, but they've, they've fought us on that. Um, I plan on doing at least 30 years. So another... 13 years or so. Probably the best question. Best question of the night just came up by, I love big knockers asked. <laughs> With all that beer in your fridge, what's your favorite beer? Uh, I, I love IPAs. I love hoppy beers, double IPAs, um, imperial IPAs. That's that's my favorite. Uh, the, the, the beer I actually do the bottle pop with is a, a local beer. It's uh, Flying Dog, and it's called The Truth. Oh, that's some good stuff. Forget what percentage is. It's like nine or ten percent. It's it's delicious. Yeah. You know, if you guys, well, I, don't, I don't do too many beers anymore. I try to stay away from the carbohydrates. Bear once in a while, I'll spoil myself. Yeah. Ooh. Are you on a low carb diet? Yeah. Both of us yeah. are. are. You both are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just. Joe's lost like ninety pounds. Yeah, he oh, has. We got half the bill. He lost all his hair. That's awesome. <laughs> Is it keto? Yeah. Have you guys, I started keto three days ago, yeah. so I'm, I'm in the yeah, third day. <laughs> it did work. So. I, was, uh, I was 380 pounds, and I'm right now at 290. 
Awesome, buddy. Started in May of last year. Yeah, that is awesome, man. It's uh, inspiring to hear. I'll tell you that. Yeah, my wife and I it, both started it, it three days ago. We're it works on quick it. too. The first yeah. couple months, the, the way you know, most of it's water weight. You, yeah, the you body excretes uh, it. Kurt was the one. I had issues where I was like frustrated with it, and Kurt told me about fasting. That's another thing you want to incorporate that in with your diet. Yeah, fasting. intermittent fasting. We're like, you know, after dinner, don't eat the next day. Don't eat. Well, not the whole next day. I mean, you can do a whole day of fasting, but. I usually have my first meal okay, like well. afternoon, like one, two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Like with, with, with being on a ketogenic diet, you don't get hungry because your your body starts burning off your your fat because you eat a high fat diet. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's why I was reading. They said you know don't start fasting until you've gotten to that point where you're not so hungry anymore. Yeah. You know. What are you guys Jack looking at? Cancer. I've been checked out. <laughs> Jack Preston talking about the ketogenic diet. He's been doing it's keto definitely too. keto, Zach. Yeah, keto. Zach's a skinny guy. Like, I, know, know, with that. I know. He, yeah. That's just the way he eats, huh? Zach, I'm very health conscious, and I go to my doctor a lot. Trust me. Yeah, I just had a physical the other day. All, all my numbers are. That's awesome. That's why I've got muscle cramps. Now I really don't get muscle cramps. I think one time when we were out digging because I didn't drink enough water. I got one tonight while we were doing this live stream. <laughs> Just about water. About thirty minutes ago, one hit me, boy. So yeah, more water. I gotta definitely take us more water and yes, eat, water is very and important. You have to pink with salt. That diet. Pink salt. Keep your electrolytes up. Awesome. Yeah, everyone's hungry now. Everyone's talking about food. Um, I love food. Yeah. I haven't had all I had today was a salad for lunch. We came, we literally walked in the door. I ran upstairs, took a shower. Oh, come on, you had a here. massively large meat stick in your hand. I had a meat stick <laughs> my coffee. Meat sticks are good, yeah. You stir your coffee with it. That's and <laughs> that's good. if you don't like meat sticks, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, it. Tim's like, I'm eating pancakes right now. Thanks, pancakes. <laughs> it doesn't even do anything for me. Yeah, after a while, it just becomes non food, right. Yeah. Like, I, I, I cheated all through the holiday season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bob. Now, like I said, I'm on my third day of it, and I was up in uh, I was up in Aspen in the past couple of days, and I took some of my workers out to uh, dinner, and we were out, and you know I'm looking at what I can have, and I had it all figured out, a nice little sirloin steak and some broccoli, no problem, but they brought chips to the table, and we just, we were in this conversation. And it was just such an automatic thing. I was like, I was like four chips in when I realized, I go like, what the, heck, what the heck am I doing? You know what I mean? Shoot, called my wife out of guilt. I'm like, honey. <laughs> yeah, trying to eat low low carb on the on the run is is, is not yeah. easy to do. Like I stick with you know salads. If you go out to a restaurant, I'll order a steak or order you know a protein and get a side salad. Yeah, I like what? I'm I'm a carb. My wife wants me six too. <laughs> Somebody's been watching, somebody's been watching the, uh, the package time videos. Yeah. No, just, you know, it's, you get used to it. Like, you don't even crave sweets anymore or car. Well, no. I, I can't say that because I love French fries. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Who doesn't cheap. like French fries or like potatoes? Yeah, but you don't think about when it. When I cheat, front of you. it's a huge thing of French fries. French fries. I remember when, before I started the diet, he would be on this diet, and I was like, man, he's losing all this weight. But the second I would get the biggest thing of French fries, he would eat them all. <laughs> I got so thirsty one day, I drank my fufu. <laughs> fufu is a survival, you know, yes, it is. Right. item as well. I mean, you can drink it. You can mist yourself if you're hot. You know, it can be a lubricant depending on what you put in your food bottle. Here's a question. You even brought it up on the promo that you did for the show, which I greatly appreciate you doing that, Kurt. Um there's been a lot of questions about sponsorship. What's you even brought it up in your in your in your thing? Is it just something that's going around Facebook? Because people just you know, you know if, like Brad was on the 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 AT Max box for <laughs> a couple of months, and like since then, like not even since then, Brad's swung his Fisher since he's been on the cover of the AT Max box or the front of the AT Max box. Nobody pays us to swing or say anything good or bad about any machine ever. We have a relationship with Garrett. We're field testers. Yes, mm -hmm. like field testers usually get to keep the machines that they field test. Other than that, yeah, we have a relationship with them, but nobody pays us. 
Dr. Terrence, I would miss you. Yeah. Dr. Terrence, what? He asked if we would miss them. I said, I would. No, he don't. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Dr. Terrence, a, a food bottle. I wish I had that picture to throw up on the screen right now. Yeah. <clears throat> but Look, yeah, like, no, like, we're not sponsored by it. Like, we, we've, I used to test, you know, I, I still have a relationship. We still have a relationship with Calico metal detectors as well. Like, you know, we, we've tested out machines in the past and, and like we've been in contact with them and they've asked us, you know, to test out this machine or test out that machine. And it's just like, I'm content right now where I am. I'm so backlogged on things I already need to edit that uh, it's not that I'm not interested in testing out new machines. It's like, I just want to go out and have fun with my friends and yeah. do some metal detector and make a video. And right. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to keep up with. I never asked for any of it, but I, I did it all to myself. <laughs> it takes a lot to put videos together and edit them and get them out. And yeah, I know, man. Well, it, it definitely takes a lot. I'm talking to everybody on my new, my new laptop. I gave my, got myself a laptop for Christmas, and now I can do editing on the the run to What's keep Brad's my family channel? time. Yeah. What's Brad's channel? Brad is Mega Post. Brad. It's uh, it Urban Brad? Treasure Hunting. Ah, cool. Up to he used to. Over there, Post videos. There, there's a there's a video on them him swinging like a white's M6 and he dug like a barber half dollar behind some old church or something. Yeah. He's got like a couple car videos and he's trying to sell one of his Mustangs and a little bit of uh, urban treasure hunting. Gotcha. Everybody go watch Brad's uh, barber half dollar dig. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go and check it out. I don't think I'm subbed to his channel, but we're gonna check that out. <clears throat> Well, yeah, you called it. You know, we tried to do this for an hour, Kurt, and we're about an hour and 40 minutes almost. And uh, yeah, Already? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, we've jammed through it here. Um, Just subscribe. What else is there? What editing software do you use? Cyberlink Power Director. Oh, is that what you're using? Yeah, we. I use Cyberlink Power Director. Yeah. Somebody asked what my favorite find was. I don't your know. favorite find? Yeah, what's Bill's favorite find? I have no clue. You don't know what your favorite I, find I, is? Well, I mean, because... I, I thought you said it was your two cent piece, because Bill and Bob's never found one. That is, but I kind of cherish everything, you know? it's it, Everything's bittersweet with you find. Yeah. So. What about uh, camera? What kind of camera are you using, Kurt? Oh, you? <laughs> my my, my busted phone? cell phone. I, yeah. that's, that's, I still use my cell phone. It's the Samsung Galaxy S7. Yeah. Before this was the S5. I think the Samsung has like the S9 out now, but I haven't got it yet because this one's still been doing me well. Our water hunts, I have. Uh, a good question. Is it the Olympus TG5? Are the NEL codes better than stops? The NEL coils are larger than the stock coil. If you're looking for a larger search area and a little more depth, yes, the, a larger coil is going to be better if that's what you need. Yeah. Today I ran the 5x8 coil. My 5x8 coil is like my yard coil. How do you do it, Kurt? Like, how do you, uh, you know, you guys are all out there, everyone's digging, everyone's excited to get on this property, you're digging stuff, and then you've always got to stop to go film. You know what I mean? And, and and still get in your digging. Like, that's got to be one of your biggest frustrations. You know what I mean? From just thinking uh, thinking about what you must be going through. I'm, <laughs> How do you pull that uh, off? I, I wouldn't be able to do it if I wasn't a, you know, I'm, I'm not a greedy man. Oh, well. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I like finding good things, too. Time. But, you know, <laughs> to, to sacrifice digging know. time. Are you saying I'm greedy, honey? You want to come get in on the chat? <laughs> yeah, get her over there. We need to ask her some questions. Boy, we can get into this. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it, I did it to myself. You know, I, it, it, I found so many good things over the years that, like, I have pleasure seeing other people get excited about what they found. Like, yeah, like this last video, Steve found a few things that I've never found that I probably never will find. I don't yeah. expect to find them. And I'm not upset about it. It wasn't for me to find. Somebody it was, asked it was if for you Steve. ever got skunked. Yeah. You can add that in Have there. I ever got skunked? Yes. Yeah. I get skunked all the time. Those, those days never make it to video. There's been days where we've <laughs> driven around for seven hours knocking on doors and they don't answer or they've told us no and we've never even dug a hole. Yeah. I mean, there's been plenty of those days. I was worried today was going to be one of those days, but we knocked a 1639 manor and they gave us permission. 
Do you have anywhere in your house where you display your finds? I wish I did. Right here on this table. Yeah, we're we're in my dining room right now, and it's it's a mess. <laughs> I, I plan on doing a relic room at some time, and yeah. there's a handful of things that are in safes or safety deposit boxes and stuff. But all right, get your wife in here. Now we can have some questions. To play right now. Yeah. I wish I did. I need Brett, to finish my. And I don't have time for that because metal detecting is a sickness. <laughs> Brad wants to know if uh, does Leo swear at Bob in his head. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Bob said Kurt Fran should only film. <laughs> should Kurt Fran only film? Yeah, Leo doesn't use profanity um, for you know. That is no lie. I, I was actually I was going to start the show with Bill. You're you're welcome to join us, but I can't edit and bleep out your profanity. So <laughs> be my Bill doesn't cuss ever. <laughs> what? I don't cuss. No, but uh, Leo. I mean, yeah. I, I see him all the time. <laughs> like, a lot. And sometimes we try to push his buttons just to get him to use, you know. Yeah, we, we have tried many things for him. Yeah, as you know, I do. I do that. I do that weekly dirt show, and I'm pulling together clips from various different uh, metal detecting channels. And uh, sometimes that's the biggest challenge: is how do I work my edit around all the cursing and stuff? Because sometimes, you know, these guys are getting pretty excited and stuff. I, I saw this one from England one time, and I just couldn't. Like every oh. single word from five different people was just, you know, <laughs> tons of cursing. And I was like, well, I'll just show the video. I'll bleep out all the uh, the audio. <laughs> Shoot. Can Bill and Bob ride in the same car together? We have. <laughs> We already brought this up. They have a love-hate relationship. Yeah. He was left at a gas station. Had Bob loves to hate Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Will we ever have a rated R episode? As long as I'm there. Oh, yeah. Urban. <laughs> That's Brad. Brad. Brad wants us to have a rated R episode. I don't think we could do it, man. It would be so dark and Deep, deep. Uh, I'm telling you, that's what you need to do is you need to start a Patreon account and put a rated R episode on a Patreon account <laughs> uh, for your special Patreon. subscribers. I, I mean, yeah. you know, kudos to those that have a Patreon account, yeah. but I'm not going to ask people to pay for something that I put on the internet for free. Right, right. I never ask anybody to watch the videos that people want to watch. Is, that's completely up to them. I monetize my videos because yeah. I put a lot of hard work and time and effort into editing them, but I'm not going to ask me to, to pay for what we do. Yeah. I think that's ridiculous. But that's just my views. Oh, gosh. Silence. <laughs> no. Awkward silence. Yeah. One more time oh. for Patreon. What? It's Brad's mom. <laughs> it's Brad's mom here. Oh, yeah. Hey, Brad, is your mom on the chat? No, she's not going to watch a, a thing about you and me. I know. She's all about her boy. Her golden boy. <laughs> Kurt, do you have a Brad T-shirt on eBay? No. Yeah. We get a comment almost every video that everybody wants a Bob T-shirt, just a picture of Bob's face. It just says no. Yeah. No. <laughs> we made a, if we made a shirt about Brad, it would have to be a corn cut in half. It would be just a ripped up T-shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, somebody made that. Oh, that, what that. products is Brad using his hair? That's a secret, secret thing that only Bob knows. It's called schmooze. <laughs> Bob Bob works hard to get that for him. Yeah. Bob, Brad's always wearing a hat. Brad's hair. <laughs> is Bob Bill's dad? Is Bob Bill's dad? <laughs> Are you my daddy? Oh, it's bad. The Bomber Boys Metal Detecting asks what overlay maps you use again. I believe he mentioned uh, historical aerials. Historic historic aerials.com i mean there's there's map there, there's a few other ones out there too that would be a good one jenga t-shirt old maps t-shirt. old maps online it's a good one yeah uh, historic aerials.com is a good one to us the, the overlays and stuff there's historic map works there's there's a there's a bunch like you just gotta you can just google your area and google old maps and like things pop up yeah but like, when you get on a place like that you can actually bring up different time periods and overlay them and see what was there. Not everything lines up perfectly, but you get a good enough idea. Yeah. <clears throat> Google Earth used to have a really cool history history uh, timeline thing. That was really cool. They did away with it, though. Um, hey, did you have you guys ever done a return? Like, have you guys ever found an item on a property and researched it, found the family of the owner of it and returned it? 
to a family member, anything like that? Me and Leo found a gold ring. We were at actually right in my neighborhood, right on my street. We were showing a guy a metal detector. He wanted to buy one, and it was a school ring right in front of him. We just looked at it and said, hey, do you know this person? And it ended up being his sister. That was the uh, the first ever ring return I did, and actually the first ever gold ring I found. Yeah. I was hoping to find a gold ring today. The guy at the 1630s house oh, yeah, that said, was when like said 15 that. years ago at some wedding, somebody lost a gold and diamond wedding ring. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I got to dig a bunch of foil signals. You ever found any personal uh, artifacts from uh, the property owner's family? You know, like, oh, that belonged to my great grandfather. And <sighs> That's a great question. I found that skeleton key the one time to the house. That we were at, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't even, did that make it to video? Was that the own video? Uh, I think it was. Yeah. Right. Uh, Bill found a, uh, a hunk of keys. keys, like a whole key ring. And uh, one of the keys on there was the original skeleton key to the it's house. Still open the front door. It's still open the front and they door. They were missing the keys forever. And yeah. the guy, you know, I forget when he lost the keys, but yeah, um, it's it's hard to track people down. I've tried. I found multiple school rings, and like you know, some it'll just say like hope inside, or you know, just some initials, and I'll call the school, and the ring would be from like the '60s, and they're like, "Yeah, we don't have any records." It's like um, Brad's actually on Ring Finders. <laughs> He, uh, he is he on Ring Finders. He's registered with Ring Finders. Mm, excellent. Yeah, Brad is. He tells us the horror stories all the time. <laughs> like I was jogging this this path. And it's like eight miles long. It's like <laughs> I'll give it a try. Right. Or like this last one was like downtown, like DC, and it yeah, was like all concrete. Con yeah. It was yeah. concrete. And concrete has rebar in it. It's like I, <laughs> right. I'll, I'll turn the machine on and let you hear what this sounds like, but <laughs> lost it two weeks ago. I'm sure somebody's already found your ring and put it yeah. in their pocket, but I'll look for you. Oh, that's I cool. Did I, I know imagine. about the date video before you made it? No, I did not know about diggersonly.com. I did not until the video came out. I like to surprise the guys with yeah. different things. Still have. Yes. Yes. Zach, yes, I do have alopecia. Yes. AKA mange. Yes, mange. That's why he's got to shave his head. For yeah. where at? We're both. Youper girl Amy Smith wants to know if you guys have ever been recognized when you go knocking on doors. They go, hey, you're the Hoover boys. And oh, that's no. Has that, that ever happened? <laughs> no. That'd be pretty cool if it did. Yeah. I think I would walk away and be like, figure it out. I found a colonial seal matrix. I found a, uh, a wax matrix that has a, a pictogram in it. Um, in, in our early own. early episodes, it's it's one of the pictures in the uh, the intro. Oh, uh, that's the earliest wax matrix I found. But Bob's found a wax matrix, a little half a wax matrix made out of silver. Um, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. My the the one I have was it's, it's actual a ring and like one side's the wax matrix and the other side's a, a watch winding key and i love watch winding keys for whatever reason i just think they're really fun to find yeah <clears throat> crotal bell too that's kind of on my bucket list i've never found a crotal bell where's your bell? A bell billy got a bell today oh that, somebody said earlier in chat they thought they heard one ringing in the background uh, i don't know if that was brad or somebody else but somebody said that's a good looking crotal bell? Bell. That, it's me uh Let's messing see. around with it i can't get over that put that up you to please. the camera kurt let's check that out the number three. Oh yeah look at that nice design it's like the white yeah. metal yeah yeah perfect awesome yeah, yeah. Cool. congratulations cool. bill congratulations buddy that's awesome well hey questions are kind of slowing down kurt um we've been on for an hour and 48 minutes um i want to talk is uh you see any you know, other others coming in there any last question yeah last questions that's where really the old poppers. It all depends on the soil it came from. I'll I mean, tell you, those pencils work pretty well, though. I kind of like them. With, with cleaning coins. Certain okay, that, that's a great topic. Silver, use water. If uh, it's not rare and valuable, you can get a little more rough with it and put it in a boiling pan of water lined with oil and put some baking soda in there and get the black schmooze off of it. Uh, copper coins it all depends on the soil it came out of. If it's toasted, if it's pitted, there's nothing you can do to bring that coin back to life. 
If it comes out of good soil, you can toothpick it and give it a finger rub and it'll look beautiful. There's not too much you can do to a bad looking coin. Says, does Bob and Brad sleep together when we travel? No, the last time it was me and Brad that slept together. Bob and Brad have a very close relationship. <laughs> they, they, they whisper in each other's ears oh, yeah. a lot while we're at the deck. Yeah. <laughs> It's a great dynamic. All you guys together really put out some great videos, and I love watching the the dynamic of all the different we, personalities. We appreciate it. we appreciate all the support. Like I said, like Definitely. you know, either you, you like us, you don't like us. We're just a couple guys, a few guys out having a good time and doing what we love to do, and that's saving history, and having yeah. fun. So what I'm going to do, Curtis, I'm going to let you kind of do a wrap up. Uh, if you want to say bye to everyone, uh, I'll kind of let you say that piece and I'm going to put you on hold. And then everyone I'm going to do is I'm going to start to wrap things up. I got a little video to show you here at the end. Um, and then I'm going to let some music play for a couple of minutes. You guys can stay and chat. Uh, then I'll end the stream about two sure. or three minutes later. You guys can finish up your conversations. That would be awesome. But, uh, Kurt, I do want to thank you and, and Bill also for coming and being a part of this Digger Spotlight show. It has been a lot of fun uh, watching you guys interact with the chat. It's been awesome. So thank you guys for taking the time. I don't know what your dream coin is. My dream. What's my dream coin? I, I'm happy with whatever the, the earth wants to give me. I mean, obviously, I want to find a gold coin or – 1600 silver or like Steve 1500 silver, you know, obviously I want a George Washington inauguration button. There's a million things that the bucket list will never end. It will never end because the more things you knock off of it, the more things get added to it. And uh, we got to wrap this thing up apparently. So I want to thank everybody out there that tunes in every single week and gives us support and love and <laughs> Nap time for Bill. Nap time for Bill. Bill <laughs> sat in the truck a little while today. Yeah, I'm like, dude, we're at a 1600s property. What are you doing sitting in the truck? <laughs> you found his cradle bell and he was content. Yeah. Until, you know, next time, help clean up the ground, dig it all, and take your trash with you. It's Bye, awesome. Bill. Awesome. Oh. Awesome. All holes matter. Awesome. Thank you all. Yeah. Hey, hang on just a second, right, Kurt? I'll get right back over to you. Okay. Hey, that, that was awesome, man. Th those guys are great. I really appreciate them guys coming on. Um, hey, if you're not familiar with my, my channel, take a look around. Take a look around it. And, and if you consider subscribing to the channel, you can check out some of the other series. I've got some more series planned for this this year. So take a look around. Let me know what you think. Leave me comments down below. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future <laughs> guests, of course. But hey, I want to thank Kurt and I want to thank Bill for coming on and being a great guest for us. It was awesome. Uh, for being generous to give away a great t-shirt. That was awesome. And uh, uh, thank everyone for participating in the chat and come along and viewing and, uh, you know, catch me on the next one, but I hope everyone has a great week. Again, I'm going to leave you with a video and, uh, some music to play for a couple of minutes. Feel free to end your conversations, finish your conversations up, but thanks a lot. Everyone have a great week. Hope to stay safe out there and I'll see you on the next episode of Digger Spotlight. I'm DK with Adventures in Dirt and we'll catch you later. Do it. He's gonna try to spin it. Come on, just spin it. Oh, oh no! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he just put a hole in the wall. <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> that was, that was